Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So today we're going to do some tutorial discussion for chapter 12 and we're going to focus on the subtopic of 12.1 which is the introduction and nomenclature of amino acid. We're going to focus on tutorial question 1, tutorial question 2, 3 and 4 respectively. So without any further ado, let us start. So for tutorial question 1, we have to find the, we have to define alpha amino acid. So the alpha amino acid basically means that it is a compound which has an amino compound and a carboxyl group bonded together on the same carbon, where the carbon here is known as the alpha carbon. So let's say if you have an amino acid here, this carbon here is known as the alpha carbon, where the alpha carbon is going to be bonded with the amino group and the carboxyl group. Okay, And the R here is known as the side chain, where the side chain can be any of the hydrogen atoms, alkyl group, or any aryl group derivative. So the whole structure here is going to be the alpha amino acid because alpha amino acid containing alpha carbon. Okay, and now for tutorial question 1b, we have to name the following alpha amino acid using the IUPAC nomenclature. So here is the alpha carbon. So the same uh, naming as before, we have to find the longest carbon chain first. So the longest carbon chain is going to be 1, 2, 3, and here is not considered as the longest carbon chain because you can imagine it to be the substituent at number 3, which is a phenyl group. Okay, so the phenyl group here will have a formula of C6H5. So the longest carbon chain is going to be 3, which is 1, 2, 3. Okay, so it's going to be a propanoic acid okay and at carbon number three we're going to attach it with a phenyl group okay so it's going to be three phenyl propanoic acid and at carbon number two we're going to attach it with amino group so it's going to be two amino three phenyl propanoic acid okay and now for e uh, we're going to have a structure here so the similar as before we have to do the numbering from a uh, for the longest carbon chain so let's see if I were to start my numbering from here because this is, this is the carboxyl group, right? So it is the priority. So I'm going to start the numbering from here. So number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Okay, so five longest carbon chain. So I know that it's going to be a pentane. Okay, and then here you're going to have two carboxyl group. Okay, instead of being pentanoic acid, it's going to be pentane dioic acid okay where the di here refer to two functional group of carboxyl group and then at carbon number two it's going to be attached with the amino group so it's going to be two amino pentane dioic acid okay and we cannot do the numbering to the left hand side which is one two three four five okay because if we were to do that we're going to get four amino pentane dioic acid so this is why we cannot do the numbering from this side and we need to go from this side because it's gonna help it's gonna give a lower number of substituent. Okay, so the full name is gonna be 2 amino pentane diweak acid. Now we're moving on to the next question, which is the real question 2. So we have to draw the structural formula for each of the following compound. So for the real question 2b, we have 2 amino 3 hydroxy butanoic acid. Okay. So butanoic acid is going to have 4 carbon, so it's going to be uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So it's going to be 4 carbon, and then the starting here is going to be carboxyl acid, and at carbon number 2, it's going to attach with the NH2 group, and then at carbon number 3, it's going to attach with the hydroxyl group. Okay, so this is a... 2-amino-3-hydroxy uh, butanoic acid or you can also draw it this way which is 1, 2, 3 and 4 okay so at carbon number 2 you're going to attach with the amino group and at carbon number 3 you're going to attach with the hydroxyl group okay and now for the tutorial question to see we have to draw 2-amino-3-methyl pentanoic acid okay so pentanoic acid we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 
Okay, so here we're going to be carboxyl group. And then at carbon number 2, you're going to attach with the amino group. And at carbon number 3, you're going to be attached with the metal group, which is the CH3. So you can draw it in terms of the skeletal structure, or you can also draw it in terms of the uh, condensed structure, expanded structure here. So you're going to be 1, 2, 3. Okay, so at 3, we have metal group. And carbon number 2, we have amino group. Okay, so it is still consistent. So both are still correct. Okay. Now for tutorial question 3, we have to define what is a zwitter ion. So zwitter ion are basically amino acid that undergo an internal acid-base reaction in which a proton, which is hydrogen, is transferred from the carboxyl group, COOH, to the amino group, which is the NH2, to form a dipolar ion. And the overall charge of the zwitter ion molecule is going to be zero. Okay, so this is what is meant by this zwitter ion. So for the follow-up question, which is 3B, we have to draw the structure of the zwitter ion for glycine, which is the 2 amino ethanoic acid. So let us uh, start drawing the structure for glycine first. So glycine will have ethanoic acid, so you're going to have 2 carbon. So 1 and 2. So 1 is ethanoic acid. Uh, here is ethanoic acid. And carbon number 2, you're going to be attached with the amine group and here going to be hydrogen and hydrogen. Okay, so when it forms a zwitter ion, the n lone pair here going to take up another hydrogen from hydroxyl in order to form NH3 plus and here going to become O minus. Okay, so it's going to be a positive charge and also a negative charge here. So the overall charge here going to be zero. Okay, and hence it is still neutral. So we're going to draw the structure to be something like this. Okay. Now for the general question number four, we have to define what is meant by an isoelectric point. So isoelectric point is also known as PI, where PI refers to the pH at which the concentration of the zwitter ion is at the maximum and the concentration of both the cation and anions are equal, where there is no net charge. Okay, and the follow-up question, which is the 4B here, uh, we can say that the isoelectric point of valine, which is 2-amino, 3-metal butanoic acid, is 6. Predict the structural formula of valine at this uh, three situation here. So first thing first, draw the structure of valine first. So let's say if you have a butanoic acid, so you have uh, 1, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then at carbon number 1, you're going to have your butanoic acid, carboxyl group here. And then at carbon number 2, you're going to have your amino group. And then at carbon number 3, you have your metal group. Okay, so this is the structure of valine. Okay, at the isoelectric point, which is pi is equal to 6. So at isoelectric point, it will exist as a sweeter ions, okay? Because the sweeter ion is at the maximum, and the concentration of both the n cat ion and n ions are equal. So what happened here is that a sweeter ion going to be formed where the nitrogen lone pair going to take up the hydrogen from the carboxyl group, and this going to break the bond in between OH, and this then transfer two electron to the oxygen. So here going to become NH3 plus. And the carboxyl group here is going to become O minus. Okay, so we're going to draw it nicely here. So what you're going to get is to be something like this. So it's going to be NH3 plus NCOO minus, where the overall charge is going to still be um, zero. Okay, and this carbon here, as you look into the carbon number three, it's going to have CH3 and CH3, right? So it can also be written as CH3 bracket 2. Okay, still the same meaning. Okay, so here is carbon number 3. Okay, now we're going to do um, the, uh, the structure at pH equal to 12. So when pH is equal to 12, we know that it happens at the basic condition. Okay, so when there is a basic condition, you know that you have your hydroxide ion. 
Okay, so the hydroxide ion gonna take up the hydrogen, and then the one of the hydrogen is lost. So it's gonna become NH2. Okay, so it's gonna become NH2, and then the other structure is not affected. So as what you can see here, the overall charge here is gonna be negative, which is the anion. Okay. Now uh, we're gonna do um Question number three here, which is a situation number three. As what you can see, um, pH one here refers to the acidic condition. Okay, so at acidic condition, you're gonna have H plus. So the H plus here gonna be taken up by the COO minus in order to form COOH. Okay, which is this side here and the other structure is not affected so as what you can see it's going to have an overall charge of positive and hence it's going to be a cation okay so i think that's all for today's video see you again some other time bye